in America. Well, our next call is going to be from New York City. So I'm going to use that opportunity to pause and ask you to talk about your own ethics situation in Congress, which all centered around your own payment of taxes. Well, uh, to our audience, uh, has seen you many times over the years. Again, the first time you've been back since then. What's the message you want to send to them about that experience? Well, that the tax code is too damn complicated. The truth of the matter is that uh, it was a political time of the year that you can take a member with uh, 40 years of legislative experience, not a blemish of his record, that served this country well, say that he committed no crimes, no act of corruption, no self-enrichment, but he violated the House rules. And as a result of that, the timing politically means we have to show we mean business, even with a Charlie Rangel during the time of this political influence. So at the end of the day, I, I think that what you learn from it is, one, never ask for yourself to be investigated for 20 years as I did. Two, the small piece of property that I had in a foreign country that they say I got income and refused to, and didn't pay taxes on it. Actually, taxes was paid each and every month and each and every year. But it was paid to the government in the, in the Dominican Republic. And I didn't receive any income. Whatever income was received over the 20 years went to reduce the mortgage that was there. And so had my, uh, my accountant been more attended to what was happening in the Dominican Republic, I would have had no tax liability at all in the United States of America. They, uh, people like to say that I was convicted of 11 counts of violating the House rule. Eight of those counts amounted to one thing. Charlie Rangel attempting to raise money from multinational foundations, not business people, to help assist minorities in the City College of New York uh, to be able to compete effectively, intellectually and academically, in having a school that would train them for public service. Not necessarily elective office, but to be able to make a contribution back uh, to this great country. Uh, when they looked at it, they said, did you do this on, uh, on, on uh, official stationery? You bet your life I did. Why? Because I thought what I was doing was official. Count one. Two, did you not put stamps on that postage? I said, no, if it's official, why should I? Three, did you get other people to help you in the office? Well, it's official, of course I did. So he took each and every count. As a former prosecutor and assistant U.S. attorney, I know that you can do that. But anyone would have to tell you that it's totally unfair to take one event and to stretch it to cover eight. And then at the last day, when I got to, to the place and after spending over a million dollars, I end up with no attorney. They came up with a new thing in the ethics committee is that we don't have to bring witnesses for any of this. And they had what is called summary judgment. So in two and a half days, without a witness and with people saying, and the record indicates we got to get rid of this Wrangle case before this Congress concludes. Due process never was a consideration of what happened to me. But you know, I've written a book called, and I haven't had a bad day since. You were here to talk about it when you did. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, that has kept me going to such an extent that nothing has happened in my life as terrible as what happened on November 30th, 1950. And since that time, it's not just the fact that my life was saved, or spared rather, but I had a contribution to be chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, a, a public servant, uh, respected and re-elected by my constituents, an 84% victory after the incidents occurred, senior member of the Ways and Means Committee today, and on your program, uh, which clearly indicates that I still have a contribution to make uh, to the Congress and to the country. So it was a bad experience, but based on my life of 80 years, I really haven't had a bad day since. I uh, want to get to calls, but a very quick comment from you, since you have characterized it as politically timed and unfair in the process. How's your working relationship with your colleagues? Extraordinary. As a matter of fact, I... I would really encourage those people who know any member of Congress to ask, what do you really think about Charlie Rangel and how his case was handled? Because it's very moving, the number of my Republican friends and Democratic friends that wish that this would never happen. However, being in a political climate, they did not want to be in a position to explain their friendship and support for me for fear 
uh, that uh, it may be misconceived as not being high, having the highest ethical standards. I want to make it abundantly clear. Those of us who get involved in public life are telling the public that we expect to be treated on a higher ethical standard than most people. And I don't think it's a complaint to say just that you've been treated unfairly, that uh, the record will have to speak for itself, and the record is there. I committed no crime, uh, was not trying to raise one nickel and enrich myself, uh, violated no rules intentionally, but it happened at the wrong time, and they brought it up uh, without a hearing. But, well, they did have a hearing, except that I wasn't there. Ten minutes left.